defense. I'd also encourage people to consider a good all natural vitamin and mineral supplementation program because again um, our bodies need every bit of help we can give them in these times. You know it's, it's interesting um, one of the most frequently asked questions for those who are conscious and aware of this aerosol operation is do they is this intended to harm us and I can't answer that I don't know but what I can say is do they know that it's harming us it, it, unequivocally they do at this point in time and so one uh, who lives in a free and democratic country would want to wonder why would the people that we trust to care for us keep us safe allow this kind of thing to go on I personally um, have gone way deep inside and had many sleepless nights and can't come up with any plausible reason why you could for any reason harm so many people um, in such a dramatic way and so I would say if you are like me you love this country you're deeply patriotic that take advantage of, of, of that freedom that we are given here in this beautiful land of democracy make your voice heard ask for an explanation ask for a discussion so that we can determine if this is something we want in our air supply we can't just keep ignoring it it's not going to go away it's just not going to go away unless people of consciousness and conscience decide to get up off the couch and do something and they can decide what that something is because if they don't as they watch the people around them and they look at their own health and they see the deterioration they're going to have to wonder at some point well gosh why didn't I do something when I could of the changes that have been made to the planet, it is a natural question to ask, why? Why would anyone want to? And who would want to alter the very air that we all breathe? We may never know the true answers to these questions, as the evidence is now clear that the aerosol operations are a covert operation, an operation that is never to be openly discussed or disclosed using the traditional channels of a free and democratic society, an operation that will never ask for your consent or for your participation and that will be conducted regardless of your concern. The answers, especially as to why, do not appear to be simple or restricted to a single purpose. The more that is understood about the nature and potential of the operations, the more complex the picture appears. What can be done, however, is to use the vast body of evidence that has been collected at a grassroots level to make interpretations that are at least consistent with this data. This has been done, and there are now five major areas of endeavor that are in agreement with the observations, data, and analysis that extends for more than five years. These are, number one, environmental engineering modification and control. Two, electromagnetic operations. 3. Military operations, 4. Biological operations, and 5. Planetary and geophysical change itself. These areas are not mutually exclusive to one another. There is an overlap that can make it difficult to discern where one program may start and another end. It is quite possible that any, and indeed likely, that many or all of these operations are being conducted concurrently. What can be done within this brief segment is to explain how and why these types of programs are consistent with the broad spectrum of evidence that is now available to examine. 
First, with respect to environmental engineering, modification, and control. The evidence now shows that the very physical nature of the atmosphere has been changed. The best information leads to the conclusion that a hygroscopic or water-seeking salt is a dominant component of the aerosols that have been introduced. It is also an observation that has been confirmed over and over, and this is that the operations frequently, if not usually, are conducted in advance of approaching moisture and storms. These salts have the usual effect of locking up that moisture with the solid particles, and to generally reduce the impact of, frequency of, and the amount of moisture that reaches the ground. This is one of the simplest interpretations that can be made that is supported by countless observations, and this is that the moisture levels of weather systems have been altered. It may be no coincidence whatsoever that drought is now commonplace and widespread, and that the moisture of the planet is becoming an increasingly precious and sought after resource. There are those who make claims that the aerosol operations have an intended benevolent objective to mitigate the effects of global warming. It is also apparently accepted within that same claim that it is best that such an intention not be internationally discussed in public and that you are best off not knowing about it. Unfortunately, the data does not support the contentions of benevolence that have been made, and in fact the majority of the data can be considered to have detrimental and potentially disastrous consequences to the life and ecology of this planet, including humans. Furthermore, the vast majority of elements and substances under examination will actually increase the heat levels of the lower atmosphere rather than decrease it when they are placed into it. This is exactly what the observations themselves support, and that is that drought conditions are exacerbated and aggravated by the introduction of the aerosols and not mitigated as many might choose to believe. In addition, there are many more complicated aspects of environmental control that are possible with the use of conductive aerosols, including the modification of the electrical nature of the atmosphere as well as thermal instabilities induced by interactions with the magnetic field of the Earth. Storms depend upon the electrical exchanges that take place within the atmosphere. Lightning is the result of electrical imbalances that occur in the electrical fields between the Earth and the atmosphere, altering the collection and distribution of rainfall, interfering with the electrical exchange of energy and producing thermal or heat instabilities, all of these point to a very realistic assessment that environmental modification and control is likely a fundamental agenda within the aerosol operations. The United States Air Force has publicly disclosed a doctrine of owning the weather by 2025, and many have good reason to believe that such objectives have in part already been accomplished. This brief introduction to this topic only considers impacts upon the atmospheric shell literally an eggshell of life that surrounds this planet. Understanding the full environmental impact, including the soil, the seas and lakes, the flora and fauna, the agriculture that sustains us, can only lead to an ominous portent of environmental change that we must pay the price for with our apathy. Not only are the moisture and heat characteristics of the atmosphere altered with the introduction of aerosols, but the electromagnetic properties have likely been changed as well. An ion is a charged electrical particle, and all of the data supports the claim that massive amounts of easily ionized particles are another important part of the grand geophysical picture. There are some elements that can actually become charged with the energy from ultraviolet light and even visible light in some cases. Barium is one such element that falls into this category. The implications of being able to modify the atmosphere electrically and magnetically are enormous, and a variety of physical methods that are used to transfer, manipulate, control, and propagate energy in that medium must then be considered. As an example of how a small change can produce a major effect, Consider the following statement from Lancaster University in the United Kingdom on the topic of the ionosphere. Quote, 
Although less than 1% of the upper atmosphere becomes ionized, the charged particles make the gas electrically conducting, which completely changes its characteristics. The ionosphere can carry electrical currents as well as reflect, deflect, and scatter radio waves." Unquote.